where do we stand in this research and development as far as you know in this country now? Yeah, the, well, the reactors I mentioned, the fast reactors are, are an obsolete design. They would not make any more of those. What the, the kind of reactor that uh, I think is the one we should use is uh, sodium cooled with metallic fuel. It's called, uh, it was developed at Argonne National Laboratory as a matter of fact, and uh, called the IFR, an integral fast reactor. And uh, uh, it is, was almost ready for commercial development when the project was canceled by President Clinton in 1994 for uh, non-technical reasons. It was canceled because it was a success, not because it was a failure. And the reason was that they were mistakenly concerned that it would contribute to nuclear proliferation. Whereas it, it actually, by burning the plutonium, it, it's a proliferation inhibitor rather than... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no. the, the, the lack of, lack of first-hand scientific ability in the White House we haven't had that since Jimmy Carter. We haven't had somebody in the White House that really understood. I don't know how, how well he understood. I thought, I, I thought he understood pretty well. He understood renewables better than anybody else. Fear winds up being a driver and then used in, in political arenas. I, I, in the 80s, the early 80s, I went to a talk from a, a guy who had left the Reagan cabinet and, and, and we talked about mutual uh, mutually assured destruction, mm -hmm. and that, um, and that since since every scientist on, on both sides of the globe knows that that it's not possible for the United States or Russia during the Cold War for either one of us to to wipe out the infrastructure of the other with a nuclear exchange without killing ourselves, um, then why don't we stop? And he said, you know, this is politics. It's all about. Uh, the impressions, it's all about the fear. And that's how people that's what that's how we get things done, you know, or how we how or how we stop things from getting done. Well you know it was in a sense deliberate policy uh, to try to look, as they said, credibly insane. That the US and Russia had to look insane enough that they would be willing to do it. Uh, uh, which is a, uh, a, a commentary on human nature, I think. I, all right, good. Well, I think we got a lot of usable information. This is uh, nuclear physicist George Stanford, and uh, thanks so much for your time. Well, it's been a pleasure. All right. You got any questions from the uh, That's good. camera angle? You know, you, you, you build a, a, a wind plant that, say, has a thousand megawatt capacity nameplate. What you get out of it is, if you're lucky, uh, 250 megawatts. It's 25 to, in some places, 30 percent uh, efficient. Now, why is that? Because the wind is either too, uh, is not blowing at the right speed all the time. So when they when they do a nameplate, don't they use some kind of an average wind speed that's normal for that area? No, uh, the the nameplate capacity, if if the turbine is rated at uh, 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 hundred megawatts, then uh, that's if it's turning at optimum speed. Like Twenty plus miles per hour, fifteen miles per hour, at least. Something like that. I think above something like thirty miles per hour, it has to shut down because the power the tower will blow down otherwise. And if it's below 10 or 15, it, uh, you're not getting there. Right. It's too much resistance to turn. So then, so natural gas at the moment is the best backup because it can come online fastest when there's no wind blowing. Or yeah. if you're using a solar thermal plant, would you? Well, that's the solar is a little more predictable, but still there's clouds and, and, and so on. So right. you, you, and, and the, doesn't produce at night. <laughs> Very little. <laughs> Very little at night. Uh, so that uh, you, uh, yeah. So you you have to have uh, you have to have backup. And and so for for baseload power, 
It's not just going to be coal or nuclear, and that's and that's it. And then and, uh, so the renewables just are picking up some of the load, and and then if they if you go to a substantial uh, quantity of renewables, like like a huge wind farm, you still need to back that up with with a like a natural gas power plant. To yeah. Well, any 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 wind. Uh, capacity is, is going to be redundant. In other words, you're, you're, uh, you've got to be able to meet the power demand on times when the wind is not blowing for an extended period. And that means you've got to have the equipment, the infrastructure that will give you the power that you need without relying on the wind or the sun. Which means that uh, all the renewable capacity is duplicated in, in other uh, in other infrastructure. Now, what you would save is fuel. So, for for a coal plant, for instance, you, you'd save the coal to the extent that you can use wind and, and taper down on the coal. You can uh, save the fuel costs. But on the other hand, uh, it means that you've got more natural gas plants. For for like rural communities where you could have a wind farm. If you weren't really going to send it too far, um, I think I think that's really the issue. If you, if you have an urban environment, it's pretty impossible to get your wind, your uh, a substantial amount of windmills, where you'd have either enough or have them close enough, so that they would only be sort of auxiliary to, to, to your base load. But out in the rural areas, I can see where you could have windmills, where you could create excess power during the day or during when the wind's blowing. But, and if you were using solar, you could uh, augment that as well. And then take that power, take the excess power, and convert that to something else. Maybe maybe that's used to convert to hydrogen. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you could pump water. Uh, and uh, anything that's not time urgent, uh, you can do when the wind is blowing. Uh, so then it reduced to a question of economics. Is it cheaper to build a wind power than to uh, get your power off the grid? And yeah. if, if the grid is nuclear supplied, then uh, you've got no environmental impetus to, to make your wind you know, make your windmills. But if it's cheaper to do it, then that would be the way to go. So I think I like I think wind should be powering wind and solar should power the rural areas that, and, and we don't really need to if we can stay away from huge grids out going over long distances. But remember that the, the demand is in the cities. Right. Well, that's that's where you're going to have and, to. Uh, but even in the rural areas, I mean, you want your lights to come on at night when the wind isn't blowing. So you're, you're going to have to have a conventional or nuclear backup. Or what about battery type backup in the homes? Sure. If Again, that's a matter of economics. Yeah. And as of now, that's very expensive. Because we don't have very, we, we don't have very good batteries. It's also mining intensive. Right, yeah, the, the materials involved is yeah. there's nothing simple there. Because you have to follow, you have to follow the resource chain for everything you're going to do if it's going to have any sustainability. Yeah. 